Hello, my amazing artists. Today we're going to be learning about Fabergé eggs and we're going to be painting our own Fabergé eggs or Easter eggs. Here's one and here's another. Now, the difference between these eggs that I'm going to explain to you in the video is that one is painted primarily with warm colors and one is painted primarily with cool colors. And we alternate. If the egg is warm, then the background is cool. And if the egg is cool, then the background is warm. Now, let's get started. Fabergé eggs were created by a famous jeweler in Russia named Fabergé. They were made famous when the Tsar started giving his wife eggs for Easter. Some are so fancy, they even open up to show different things inside, like boats and carriages. Many of the Fabergé eggs were destroyed when the Russian king, or Tsar, was overthrown. Of the 69 eggs made by Fabergé, only 57 survive today. Hello, my amazing artists. Today, we're going to paint an Easter egg for Easter that's coming up next week. Now, our Easter egg is going to be using two types of color. We're going to be using the warm colors and cool colors. And we're going to make all kinds of designs on our egg. You're going to need crayons. You're going to need a watercolor palette if you have one. If not, you can make watercolor from a food dye and water. It'll be liquid watercolor. And I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. And you're going to need a water cup and a brush. Okay, so while you're getting those materials together, I'm going to show you my coloring wheel. Now, on my coloring wheel, I have all the colors or a lot of the colors of the rainbow. Now, um, you can see that I have this dotted line, dashed line down the middle of the color wheel. I mean, it's kind of at an angle. I could turn it like this so it's up and down. And on one side, I have warm colors, and on the other side, I have cool colors. Warm colors are kind of make you think of fire and hot, and cool colors make you think of winter and um, ice and kind of, um, you know, nighttime. So um, I have divided my colors. I have, you know, pink and red an orangey red, an orange and yellow for my warm colors. White is a neutral, so I can use it if I choose my, to use my warm colors or my cool colors. I can use it for either one. And green, a yellow green, blue, blue green, and indigo and violet are all cool colors. Okay, so I'm also gonna need some drawing paper, but I think you guys figured that out. First thing I'm going to do is draw my egg. Now, believe it or not, I'm not the greatest at drawing eggs, but I have a trick. I am going to choose first if I'm going to do warm colors or cool colors, warm colors or cool colors. Um, I used cool colors to draw last time and I painted with warm colors. So this time I'm going to draw with warm colors and paint with cool colors. So I'm going to switch it. Okay, so I'm going to draw with warm colors. I'm going to pick kind of a lighter color. I could do yellow, actually, but I'm going to start with red, mostly because um, I want you to be able to see it. But if I'm not so sure if I'm ready to draw an egg and I need a little bit of practice, I'm going to start with yellow because it won't show up as much and I can make a lot of lines until I get it right. Okay, so I'm going to start with kind of a medium-sized rainbow up top, the top of my paper. I didn't take it to the very top, but it was very close. And it goes from side to side. And then I'm gonna draw a smiley face. Now you see how I'm almost to the edge. I'm gonna go almost to the bottom and then back up. It's a big old smiley face. Now I'm gonna connect the two. I'm going to just go from one end to the other and I'm kinda of gonna overlap it so I can fix it if I don't think it's the best, and then I'm going to overlap it. It's kind of a wonky egg. That's okay. When I start coloring it or I can fix it with my more lines, um, it's going to look fabulous. Next, I'm going to add some designs. Now, I can do these in lots of different colors. I'm going to add some patterns. 
Now remember a pattern is like A, B, A, it repeats. A, B, A, B, A, B. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a wavy line. So I'm going to go up and down and then I got to repeat it. So I'm going to go up and down and up. And I might do a couple lines like this and then I could either color it in, but since I'm going to use paint, I think I'm going to wait and um, just color it in with paint. And then while I've got this red orange crayon up here, I might do another line up here, like a, maybe a smiley face. This would look, I'm making it a little bit curved so it looks like it's going around the egg. And maybe one at the bottom. So I can switch back and forth between colors, but when I have one color, I try to use it a lot, and then I can always go back and use it more if I want. I'm gonna choose yellow. And I'm going to draw some circles in these waves. And so that I can show that it keeps going around the egg, I'm actually going to draw a half circle because it was kind of a half bump over here. So I want to show that the pattern keeps going. So I might even draw just a little tiny circle over there. Remember, I'm not really coloring in because I want to um, paint it later. So I'm going to do that, maybe on both sides. This is little or, or yellow dots everywhere, okay? And next I'm going to choose, let's see, I did red, I did red orange, I'm going to do orange now. Uh, one of my favorite patterns to repeat is the heart. So remember, I can make two candy canes, one candy cane and the other candy cane to make a heart, or I can make a M and then a V to make a heart. And then I like to actually make upside down hearts to fit in. So I'm gonna make an upside down M, which is also a W, and an upside down V or like a TP shape. Now I've got an upside down heart. How fun is that? And do it like that. Or I can do my candy cane upside down. And I did just a half one, so it looks like it keeps going. And let's see, we need one more. Well, I might do triangles. And I kind of slanted one on the edges so it looks like it's going around on my egg. You can do it like that or however you do it, it's going to look fantastic. Now for my favorite part. I'm going to draw it with white. Now, you're going to not see it. Oh my goodness, that's so silly. But I know it's there, right? And you guys know the magic trick that when I paint over this, I'm going to see it because this is called a resist. And wherever I'm putting wax, just like the oil pastels, it's going to resist the watercolor. So I'm actually going to kind of go to town with this because this is one of my favorite things to see what it happens when the I paint over it with a watercolor. So I'm just gonna even, not color in, but I might just do um, little spots of white that I know in a pattern shape. Did I do anything with those circles? I think I did the inside. I could do around the outside too of the yellow circles. So I'll have these white circles on the outside. And maybe I'll even go in between these triangles and make kind of these little fan shapes that I like to do. Don't worry, you'll see them in a minute. Okay, so now that I've used my warm colors to draw, I'm going to paint my egg with cool colors. Um, the reason we do this is so that now we're using the opposite palette of colors, and so my crayon, I'm not going to lose it. If I painted yellow over the yellow, I wouldn't see it anymore. But since I'm going to be using cool colors in a different palette, I'm not, I'll be able to see it. So now, the thing about my watercolors is I have to wake them up. Did you know they're asleep? Because I can't, I can't pick it up. So what I have to do is I'm going to add little droplets to my watercolors. And I'm going to say, wake up, be green. Wake up, yellow green. Wake up, aqua and blue. Wake up light blue, wake up violet and indigo. It's time to wake up, it's time to paint, and they love this. They love to be woken up, unlike some people. And I'm going to just lightly paint it 
Okay, so I'm gonna give it a minute, and then when I feel like they're kind of woken up a little bit, I'm gonna paint with the juice. So I don't want to dig into my paint because then I am not painting with the watercolor, the water, I'm painting with the, the paint palette. And it doesn't last very long and it looks sticky and uneven when I do it like that. So I'm going to just lightly put my brush in the paint well and I'm gonna pick up the juice and I'm gonna start painting with the juice. And I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint kind of a pattern. Now you could paint just all over everything really fast if you want. It's your drawing, you could do it however you want. I am going to try to keep up the patterns with the colors that I'm painting also. So I'll, I'm gonna try to paint things the same, okay? And like I said, I like to kind of use up a color and then before I switch colors. You don't have to do it like this, but that's the way I like to do it. And when it starts to get a little bit dry, because I've been using a lot of this green, I just add a little bit more water to it and get a little bit more juice and start painting some more. time to take a little bit of a break and let it dry because we're going to paint around this and I don't want it to um, to uh, spread too much. Now a little bit is going to. Now I could just let it dry and cut it out and I could glue it on something else. I could do a whole different Easter background and glue it on top um, or I can paint the background. Now this one I painted it outside and I gave it some grass and some clouds. I could do that with this one here or I could just make a simple um, tabletop and I probably could have done this before I started um, painting but I didn't so I'm doing it now. I just need to be careful when I draw next to something that's wet because I could tear a hole. So um, if I'm going to draw a tabletop I have to start it a little bit farther up. I can't draw it down here. It's going to look like it's falling off. So to look like the table, it's sitting on a table, and I could draw it up here. I could draw it down here. Um, I need to draw it a little bit higher than the bottom. And, you know, I could add some different designs back here, and this could be, um, you know, this could be wallpaper. I could just draw stripes coming down and I probably need to draw them off the page so it looks like um, there's still some, it's still going behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that over here. Make sure I'm completely on. And um, I could give it some more designs. I could give it some wiggles going off. I could give it some polka dots. It just, you know, just makes it a little bit more interesting than if I just paint it one color or um, a solid color. But I can add textures with paint too. Now, like I did with the cool colors, I have to wake up my warm colors. I'm gonna say, wake up magenta, wake up red, wake up orange red or red orange, wake up orange. Wake up yellow orange. Oh, this one looks like it's a little bit dirty. So I'm gonna try to pick up some of that green out of it. I could even take a paper towel and kind of clean it up too. But I can actually use my paintbrush and pick up some of that paint. Same with my yellow because I want him to be a warm yellow, not just a um, green yellow. I'm gonna take a tissue and I'm just gonna lightly blot those colors that are a little bit dirty. And that way, I can add a little bit more water and it's cleaner. 
I don't want to dig at it though because then that will take a lot of my paint out of there. Okay, then I'm going to blot my colors and I'm going to add some water because um, I don't want to dig at it because that will take out a lot of my paint. But I want to um, just kind of lightly tap it and take out that dirty color and add some more water in. Okay, now I really think I'm going to, I love this magenta, it's one of my favorites. So I'm going to paint the, the ground. And you'll notice even when I was painting my egg, I paint it kind of darker um, towards the sides because that makes it look a little bit more three dimensional, like it's going around because when things go away from you, they get darker. And so um, I'm gonna do the same thing kind of when, oh, I need a little bit more juice, don't I? I'm gonna do the same thing when I am painting underneath the egg. I want it to look a little bit darker. So I'm gonna break my rules a little bit and I'm gonna add just a little bit of violet underneath and make it look like um, there's a shadow coming from underneath the egg. I don't have to use black, and black can sometimes be a little too much and a little too harsh. But I can just add a little bit darker color, which for me was purple, a little bit darker than the magenta, because my color wheel starts back over here. So it goes from magenta to purple and goes this way again. And for the background of my egg, let's see, I really like I'm going to do something bright. So I'm going to use this orange, yellow orange, and I could paint stripes with my um, with my wallpaper background that I drew with crayon, or I can just paint it however I want. So I think I'm just going to paint it solid so that my egg really stands out and is the, um, the leader. And I'm going to do that over here, and it's going to get a little bit lighter towards the top for me. So I'm going to use yellow at the top. And remember, if I get low on juice, I'm just going to add a little bit more water and keep going. I'm going to take care of my paints, and I want even paint. And when I paint with the water, because it's watercolor, that's what I get. I might even add a little bit of this. Ooh, it's very dark. Try to blend it in a little bit add a little bit of water even. I don't even have to use paint. Let's do the same over here because I want it to look like it's the same paper going up. And then we're going to go to yellow. And I'm going to just get a little bit of that juice. Now if I wanted it to look like there's a shadow behind the egg, I could do the same thing. I could use a little bit of a darker color around. I want to go to the same direction. So I could get use this darker orange again, and I can kind of paint just a little bit of a shadow like that. Or even a little bit of my red. Blend it in. And sometimes you don't even have to blend that much because your paints will disperse and kind of run together for you. Let's put a little bit down here. And that's my Easter egg. This looks like a, a famous Fabergé egg that um, the Tsar of Russia would give to his wife for her anniversary or their anniversary. So it's beautiful and it reminds me of Easter. So I have my cool color egg or my warm color egg with, um, you know, alternating colors. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Easter and I look forward to seeing you or talking to you later. I hope you guys have a wonderful Easter and I look forward to um, talking to you later.